Okay, this is the uh, February 20th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Um, Frontier Community Access Television is taping us tonight for viewing later on by residents and the public. And they always do such a great job. Thank you for being here, Dan. Okay, first item on the agenda is um, minutes for Monday, February the 12th. Bob, you have yep, a they to look, look fine. over the minutes. Yeah, yeah. They, look, they look good. Thank you, Lisa. Great job as usual. I think reading them took longer than the meeting. I mean, uh, they were great. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve the minutes for February 12th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda we have uh, three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $165,446. Um, $464, excuse me. Um, payroll warrant for $104,939 and a payroll deduction warrant for $25,831. I'll make a motion that we accept these warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda, meetings attended by select board members. Okay. What did we do this week? I haven't had a chance to think about it. You want me to go first? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Last week I attended um, a Massachusetts Municipal Association Board of Directors meeting in Boston. Um, we talked a lot about the um, increase in revenues that have come in, primarily because people are paying their taxes early. So it was a big bump and not expected to continue, but it looks good on paper right now. Um, so, so revenues are streaming, have, were streaming into Boston before the end of the year. Uh, that was a good meeting. Uh, we talked a little about legislative matters and uh, of course, the Cannabis Control Commission and the governor's budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, I also had a meeting uh, with the Local Government Advisory Commission with the Lieutenant Governor and uh, Director of uh, DLS, Sean Cronin. Um, again, we talked about the Governor's budget, the um, problems with Chapter 70 and Chapter 90 funding. Um, same old things we talk about all the time. Uh, so. That was in Boston as well. And then I had a meeting of the Massachusetts Selectmen's Association Board of Directors uh, where we talked about the up and coming schedule for this year, the meetings and how we're going to hold them, where we're going to hold them and the subject matter of those meetings. So that was, that was good. We have some good, uh, good meetings coming up this year. What did you do? So, well, Thursday we had an FCAT meeting that actually was canceled at the last minute. So, right. uh, there were too many people who couldn't attend. We couldn't get a quorum. So, and there was nothing pressing that we needed to go over. So, we'll have that next month. Mm -hmm. And the only the other thing that I did last month, that, last week, that was I did go into the state house for other things, but I went in there largely to see Steve Kulik and. And I wanted to make sure anyone watching this may not have heard that Steve is not going to be running for office right. uh, after 28 years or what? Long time. It's, he's he's it's been our rep. It's a long time. And, and we're, we're certainly going to miss him. Very much so. And not just us. You know, being in the State House, everybody in the State House, when they learned I was from his district, and, and I went in mostly to see him, but mm -hmm. um, wanted to, you know, just say how much they will all miss them, and um, and for us, you know, to have uh, uh, our somebody from Western Mass and from you know a group of towns no larger than Conway. I mean, you know, he represents nothing but rural little tiny towns, and he's vice chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, and has a lot of respect, and has done a lot of great work for rural issues. Um, yeah, he will be missed. And we will miss him. And yeah, so is. there's a lot of interest on who's going to take his seat, who's going to run, um, and we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. We're, we're going to miss him greatly. He does such a good job for us. Yeah. 
and he's such a great guy aside from that. So, yeah. And you know, if you, if you need something from Steve, you could call Steve and he'd be here. So, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna make a big hole in our, uh, in our situation, our legislative situation. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, next item, old business uh, annual town meeting warrant. Okay, review and discuss discussion of draft. Um, we really don't have much to discuss on that tonight. No, I've just moved the um, the uh, ten thousand dollars for the grant fund uh, from the bylaw side where it was because originally it was going to be a revolving fund mm -hmm. over to the. Uh, First part of the budget, so it's really just a uh, uh, a change in location. Oh. From one thing yeah. Changed. Robin, with yeah. you? Yeah. That's what I figured. Can you hold the phone? Thank you. All right. Uh, next item: petition to change in highway operations, labor and capital considerations. What's that about? Ron is going to. Uh, well, you know, we did get that uh, petition that is now on the on the warrant for uh, having highway take over the landscaping right. operations which have been outsourced yeah. until this point. Okay, Ron, you're up. All right, well, this is in regards to the petition, okay. and basically, if we're gonna take over that need, I've come up with some numbers that we really need to address for town meeting. Um, so that we have, are funded to both equipment and personnel. So, so I suspect nobody watching this is going to know what this is about. Yeah. Do, do you want to introduce this, Tom, or should Ron, or one, one basic question. Is, are the increases you have in mind larger than the, uh, the contract we had with the, with the, with the last uh, vendor? Um, yes. Just, just the labor alone, not counting buying any equipment. Okay. Um, There's, it's not just mowing grass that the, the yeah. vendor does. He takes care of the yeah. Yeah. landscaping company. Yes. I mean, do, do you want to talk about the petition, or do you want to talk about the petition? Yeah. I'll, I'll just say that, that, okay. uh, that there's a, a petitioned article on the annual town meeting warrant. Um, now that the highway crew have a new zero-turn lawnmower, there's no reason to bid out lawn mowing for the following. All commons in town, the ball field, all cemeteries, and the Conway Grammar School, uh, appended by the uh, statement, this will save the town monies that can be used for other departments and expenditures that we need to focus on. So that, that petition was submitted. There was a sufficient number of signature certified, and so that's on the annual town meeting warrant. Um, I will uh, point out that um, we have, uh, so far, the uh, Conway Grammar School has been paying for their part of the mowing. Um, and the cemeteries and the ball field are paid for by trust funds. Uh, and of course, it's still on the on the town budget if the grammar school is paying for the for their share of it, uh, but the ball field and the cemeteries have so far come out of uh, trust funds. Yeah. Uh, so it's a the funding situation was a little more complex than uh, yeah. um, may have been <clears throat> understood. I, I I certainly I certainly respect the right of our citizens to. Uh, circulate petitions and get signatures. Uh, about matters in town. However, I, I don't think that the people who signed this petition really understand the operations of the uh, highway department and all that goes into uh, what, what we do with vendors in terms of outsourcing. We usually outsource when, when, when we need something to be done that we can't do ourselves and we can do it less expensively with a vendor than we can ourselves. And, and those are the reasons. It's about a $15,000 contract now, is that right? Yes. Yeah. 14000 14. Yeah. Okay. So can you continue with that? Well, it, it, the petition says that because I bought a zero turn mower that this is where this is coming from. Well, first off, the mower wasn't bought to handle that kind of maintenance. Mm -hmm. It was done to smaller projects, 
the, like around the salt shed. Um, there was, the intent was that um, cemeteries, you know, it's minor time that's for the cemeteries. The other thing was there's other parts of town where the more would be make it there's intersections that get taken care of once a year that in my opinion if they got done once a month would kind of make things nicer mm -hmm. but, you know appearance wise in the town and that's some of where the more origination came from was just trying to make things more appealing mm -hmm. Um, but the mower was never intended to take on that kind of a task. It's not, the mower's not really capable of taking on that amount of work. Um, so what I've done is I've come up with a list of, and dollar amounts of what we would need to take on this project. Um, equipment and cost alone, we're looking at $46,500 initial purchase. Now that would be for a larger mower mm -hmm. um, with more of the attachments that you would need to handle what is already being done. It would also include a, um, a pickup so that the mower can be moved around and a trailer, an enclosed trailer because we don't really have any space to store the equipment and keep it secure, so an enclosed, so it's not a whole lot extra over a, a regular open trailer, but mm -hmm. at least it would be all together for the project. And then we'd, then we'd be talking about the labor, and it's 30 weeks approximately of the time frame of taking care of the maintenance. Mm -hmm. And 25 hours a week is what I determined that would be needed to do it. Um, it's not just sitting on a mower and mowing it and be done. There's other things like maintenance to the equipment and all that stuff that has to be figured in. And to find, being a part-time position, to find somebody that hopefully you could keep for the duration of a year. Mm -hmm. I'm figuring that you would have to at least pay $20 an hour. Otherwise, what happens if you hire somebody and, and that probably will still happen, is three or four weeks into it, they find a full-time job with benefits, and then what do we do? Mm -hmm. Now we have to take other personnel to handle the project. So, you know, so that, that's assuming that you can't pick up this labor on your own. Well, we already at this point we have so many projects that need that we can't get to because we just don't have the time mm -hmm. to take a 25 hours out of our work week would be just unreasonable to ask of us mm -hmm. um, have, have you have you spoken to our present vendor about you know his hours and what what he needs. What he needs. I, I've actually talked to um, other people that do that kind of work. And okay. I, didn't, I didn't have the time, I didn't have, I haven't gotten a hold of him, um, the current vendor. Okay. And we're actually in the middle of redoing our contract anyways for, so I didn't want to get too involved with the existing one in, I don't know, I just thought maybe it wasn't a good idea to Okay. Um, All right. If, if you would share those numbers with Tom when you have a chance, and I think what we yeah, should I do, seen them yet. what we should do is uh, um, see if we can go out to bid uh, for that. Is when is our current vendor going to end his? Year? He's done. He's done. Yes, okay. That so, ended in, all right. So let let's go out to bid for for well, that. And make we may not have to go out to bid on this. And we didn't last well, time. That's that's true because it's less than uh, less than twenty five. But well, we need quotes. We, need, yeah, we do need, we need quotes. Three quotes. Yeah. Or if it's well, under fifteen, solution. we might yes. not have to. We need we That'd need be under. We need some comparison between doing it with a vendor and doing it in. Yes. House. Oh yes. So. 
but the other thing is, I'm have I'm going to have to hire somebody because this the contract starts in April. I don't have the way or means to do it starting in April. The contract starts in April, right? Okay. So my guess is by the time if this all went through, a contractor would be doing it for most of the year. Right. Right. And uh, so it wouldn't be until the following year that. I mean, okay. because by the time you go to town meeting and then you have to mm -hmm. put everything together to buy everything. Um, okay. We better get on that right away then. Yeah, okay. I think Ron's still working on that. Yeah. Okay. Great. But how are we going to handle all of this extra stuff? Are you going to have another warrant article? Yes, that's what I'm asking that we we would have to do. I would assume to fund the project in, in case it passes. I mean, you know, this this could pass at town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not going to answer to whether what it won't. Uh, no, uh, none of us. You can't. But but it might and or we could we amend it on town meeting floor to I'm include sure you probably will be asked a ton of questions sure well, I also have something I'm shot. maybe nothing I don't know I don't know what to tell you. right you don't know but 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 if it passes then we we need to have either another article to support all of that equipment and hiring someone correct or well, that's why he's going to discuss the the numbers with Tom okay yeah. And uh, and that would have to go after the petitioned article because if it didn't pass, then we wouldn't want to. Right, right. You don't want to pass over it. Right. It, right. The other thing, the only other comment I have is that back in 2011, Bob brought this forward to the town, and his numbers were back then thirty thousand dollars for. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that we're and too we were far out of line on. We were shot down. And the other thing is that I have from the minutes, yeah, I remember that, yeah. right. from the minutes in 2011, on March 7th, quoting the minutes here, Maureen, who was a select person, Maureen said that maintenance and cost of manpower, as well as other department projects needing attention, would all be potential problems if the department were to begin doing this work in-house. So, I mean, it's already been before the board once before, mm -hmm. and that's where they were with it back then. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. Okay, next item on the agenda, oil spill at the transfer station. Yeah. You're up, Carl. Okay. Um, this came together in a lot of little pieces. <coughs> I've more or less got a scenario put together of exactly what happened. Um, but on the uh, 11th of February, which was a Sunday uh, in the afternoon, um, a resident <coughs> came into the transfer station with five oil drums in his truck and um, went around the, the line that was you know, lined up to the shed and backed into where the, um, <coughs> the scrap metal container and threw four of the barrels in before a transfer station attendant saw what was going on. The transfer station attendant helped them with the fifth drum. And, and uh, the resident, which is Dana Goodfield, said um, that the drum, and, and the transfer station inspected that drum, and Dana said that it was empty. Oh, sorry. And they're all, <laughs> they're all empty, it's the wife. Um, <laughs> So um, nobody thought anything of it. And last Wednesday, uh, it was Valentine's Day, the 14th, uh, it got kind of warm in the afternoon and the uh, Butch and Lee, who were up at the transfer station, could smell oil. And they kind of looked around and noticed a stream of oil coming out of the back of the uh, scrap metal container and uh, off down the little wall there and it was headed down the um, embankment and then off to the drainage swale down off the property. So they immediately got, um, we have spill kits for the hazardous waste, so they immediately got a spill kit down and started putting out booms and, and speedy dry and uh, mm -hmm. um, pads and things like that to absorb the oil. 
Uh, that was good, and they called, they couldn't get a hold of me, so they called Jan Amin from the Franklin County Solid Waste District. She came out, not that there was much she could do about the whole thing, and um, she left a message for me too, which I got when I finally got home about 6.30 or so. Um, called back to the transfer station and, and got all the, um, all the information um, and immediately called, uh, I called the DEP on their emergency hotline and logged a, a, a call uh, to them um, and took off for the transfer station. By the time I got to the transfer station, I had calls, three calls from D the DEP of people who were focusing on getting up there. Uh, they showed up about, oh, about 8 o'clock. Uh, came up from Palmer, uh, Dave, um, uh, David Backhand um, came up and uh, he was, he had the truck with all the stuff. So he put down more pads and more booms and, and whatnot, actually went down and looked in the drainage swale to see what was, was down there. Um, we have no idea how much oil was there, but some, one of those, or some of those four barrels that were put in ahead of time, had waste oil in them. Um, the waste oil came as, as Dana uses waste oil to fire his evaporator over at his place, the sugar house across the street from his house. So he's been using waste oil for that and alleged, I don't know where he's getting it from. Some people said he was getting it from the town garage. I have no idea. The barrels did not have any bungs in them. There were no you know caps on any of the, mm -hmm. of the barrels. So. You know, as they went in, you know, they, they, one of them or some of them started draining out. And like I said, we have no idea of, of how much there was, but it was definitely enough to report to the DEP. Mm -hmm. So the, um, Dave went to work on that, and he had called uh, environmental services down. He was, he was calling cleanup vendors. He was trying to get somebody in Pittsfield, I think Maximilian in Pittsfield, uh, but finally got a hold of this environmental services outfit in Connecticut. I think they're... They're probably down in Windsor or somewhere down near East Windsor. And uh, they came up with a vacuum truck and they were able to, they worked till midnight um, sucking up as much oil as they could find that was in a large enough pool. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, that was the end of the activity for that night. And, on, and I had logged a call with Tom uh, right away too. I, got a, I knew nobody was there, but I left him a voicemail to, mm -hmm. to say where what was going on. So the next day I met with Tom and we you know, acquainted him with what we knew, you know, up to that point. And, um, you know, there's issues with the, the waste oil burner, whether it's licensed or not, and transporting uh, 55 bar gallon barrels of waste oil is you need a, a class A hazardous waste transport license to do that. Um, so there's, there's still a lot of things that are up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tom and I formed a game plan and, and, uh, got, and, and Tom reached out to, to some of the uh, cleanup vendors and tomorrow morning at 9.30, we're gonna have a, um, uh, we're gonna open the transfer station and have a, a site visit situation where these uh, deal with these contractors can come in and look at the situation and give us quotes and things like that. Uh, we also have to attract uh, what they call a um, licensed site professional. professional. And he's a guy that knows all the paperwork. And, and so as the cleanup, and each cleanup company probably has their own, and there's independent guys that do this too. But they're the ones that get all the paperwork squared away for, um, for all these cleanup processes. So what needs to be done is the oil, there's still oil behind the um, scrap metal container. And I called Butch and um, asked him if he and Lee would at least get that cleaned up by using the booms and, and stuff. And we have more uh, spill material showing up soon. So they're gonna do what they can to clean up what is liquid and left behind the uh, the, the scrap metal container, but what still needs to be done is we're, we, we did get the barrel, they, they pulled the barrels out right away. They were standing there when I got there. Um, and the DEP guys covered the barrels so that they wouldn't get any rain. The, the main issue being rain and, and runoff. Mm -hmm. So they also uh, tarped over the, uh, the scrap metal container 
so that we wouldn't get any rain, you know, in that. And we brought in another scrap metal container, an empty one, next to it. So that if we're going to transfer some clean stuff, we can. We, we, it's not too far to reach. We could get in there with a mini and, and just with a grapple and just mm -hmm. pick stuff out and put it in the in the other <coughs> bin. Mm -hmm. uh, whew, that's um, Tom and I met with um, Joel Reese. He's the main guy for the Western Mass DEP office down in Springfield. He came up today to take some pictures and look around. And, See what was going on, and he's working with Tom and I to you know, get get these get everything lined up on and whatnot. But there's still going to be some involvement with scooping up some of the dirt down below the uh, the wall mm -hmm. to, where the scrap metal container sits on, and the um, swale that goes down below. But most of that swale is is uh, is ledge because mm -hmm. when we when we dug that all out years ago behind the behind the waste uh, shed. I mean, we got down as far as we could into, into, into the uh, ledge, and, and that was pretty much it. That became the bottom. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of dirt to be contaminated there, and the the area underneath the, the um, uh, scrap metal container <coughs> is uh, oil asphalt, so there's no chance of the oil, you know, leaking into that either. So, yeah. so the integrity of the, the ground is pretty good and the, the amount of cleanup areas is rather small, but it's still gonna cost us a bundle mm -hmm. by the time it's all over. And the DEP has um, declared this, what they call a shared responsibility, that both, that it's not necessarily Dana's fault or the town's fault, but it's a shared responsibility. So at some point, we're gonna have to get together with Dana and and see what um, who's going to pay what, right? You know, okay. kind of thing. Jim Allen was the uh, uh, transfer station attendant there, and I'm getting a written um, document from him as to you know what happened because he he was busy taking care of people, and you know the, the, even with two of them there, there's a lot of stuff going on. Sure. Yeah. And sometimes things get missed. Yeah. So for some in some some way, some of those barrels got into the into the uh, scrap metal container when they had oil in them. Mm -hmm. They probably just landed the wrong way and yeah. started training. <laughs> okay, so next step is tomorrow morning you're gonna have those- Next uh, morning we're gonna have the contractors come. Contractors come, come and yes. look at the situation. Yep. Okay. All right. And you and Tom have it under control. More or less. Okay, great. <laughs> Do you have some idea of how much you said a bundle? <laughs> I, 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 I'm thinking Several gallons, you know, to maybe somewhere. I don't know. I we we, we have no way of quantifying that because yeah. when we pulled the, when they pulled the barrels out of the of the um, of the scrap metal container, there was oil in them. There was. Uh -huh. So so the, there's one of them is empty because that was the fifth one, but the other four have cer a certain degree of oil in them and they're uh -huh. covered. So all all four of those had some oil. In them. I I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate okay. you coming in. So yeah, we're we'll keep you posted. Okay. And Tom will keep you posted. And Great. at some point, like I say, we'll have to get together and meet with. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you know, I'm kind of letting you guys take you know a lot of the heat on this because you guys get paid. I don't. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah. a vol This is a volunteer job, you know, and I'm so I'm trying to get people who. Who are you know, like Tom? At the smoke way. settles, you need to get your group of people together. Oh yeah. At the transfer station, and somewhat teach them the proper procedure when they have an oil spill. Oh yeah. What if you weren't available? Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Oh, they did. They, they, they never called the fire department. We have all kinds of smoke. Well, stuff we had the there. fire department was there and the police department was. Yeah, there. I was oh, you there, were there at you were seven o'clock. That's when they call. I got the call. Right. We called you. What time is this, this thing set up? What day time they start? Apparently. They probably found out mid afternoon, I'd say four or five o'clock. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Set up a set of emergency procedures that they have to Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They have right. posted on the site. No, we had everybody mm -hmm. there. We called the police, we called the fire, we got everybody. You didn't call the fire department, by the way. Not right away, no. No, you didn't call the fire department. No. no, we did not. Not right I, away. I got one of it through the grapevine. Right. Well, somebody logged the call. They never logged the call to the dispatch center. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you, Carl. Excellent. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, Department of Agricultural Resources Apiary Program. Um, I'm thinking that we probably... We got a letter about it last week. Yeah, the best refer that to the Agriculture Committee. Yeah, let's let's do that. And, and you want to put this on the site? On sure. the website? Sure, we can do that. Okay. Do we have our yeah. finance committee here? I think so. Yeah, Carl, if you can tell them to come in, that'd be, that'd be oh, good. Oh, sure. Sure. Gentlemen. The next item on our agenda is a joint meeting with the Finance Committee. We're going to review the um, fiscal year 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Tom, do you have some? Yeah. Uh, you should all have uh, uh, two files on projected FY 2019 special articles or money articles. One of them is listed by source of funding and the item. The other is listed by the department and the item. Uh, you should also have a, a sheet that is the uh, general government spending, which is, uh, uh, you, you can't take these as uh, final figures, but they're, uh, they're a rough representation so far. I hope to have final figures uh, very soon, including your, uh, including the last thing you have, which is a a, uh, a sheet showing what the uh, COLA increase would be under the case of uh, two percent, two point five percent, and three percent. And uh, it the. I, d I don't need a decision on that in order to come out with my budget because when I put out my budget, I just include what these costs would be and then that, that uh, people who read the budget would have to subtract from the, uh, the uh, excess capacity that we have. Um, nothing has changed on the, on the uh, warrant since you last got it except I took the $10,000 for the grant fund out of the bylaws section where it was because originally it was going to be a revolving fund and I put it into the <clears throat> the first section with all the other money articles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's really the same as it was the last time. Uh, I also did want to go over some preliminary figures which I don't want to give out because everybody will say, but you said this. But, um, with the figures that, that I've been working with, and these do not include the final technical schools budget, it doesn't include any of the final schools budgets. Mm -hmm. um, but it, um, and it doesn't include the latest Conway Grammar School budget, which raises that, the figure that I have up about a little over $3,000. Mm -hmm. um, in the grand scheme of things, that's not an incredible amount, but uh, at first glance, um, I, I can come out with a budget that is about $111,000 excess levy capacity, which is a lot more comfortable than it has been for the last two years. Um, and that results um, in an approximate, uh, if you include the 2.5% uh, a, a raise and this new uh, the new figure from the Conway Grammar School, maybe a 4.2% uh, increase. We had about a 4.85% increase last year. 
So it's gone down, I think, perhaps over half a percent. Uh, the increase has gone down. So that's, that's uh, good news to start out with. Um, that would still mean a substantial increase in the tax rate. So, um, you know, I always think it's a, it's a good idea to, to vote for things if they're possible, uh, to go on the warrant and to let the town decide whether they want to have it. That does involve letting people know, of course, what the, what the potential rise in the, in the operating budget is and, and, and tax rate would be, which uh, we have been doing at town meetings. So people are aware when they're voting on something that, you know, roughly what uh, that, would, that would raise the taxes. Um, Lee, Lee has, a, has a general figure. Um, you know, for every certain tens of thousands of dollars, the tax rate goes up a dollar. So you can, you can just use that and say, okay, if it's, it, it's about, because our budget's about um, 5,500, it would be about $55,000. Um, every $55,000 that goes up, it raises the budget a certain amount. She, she has those figures, and, and I'll be working with her for town meeting to make sure that people know the effect of their votes. Um, well, right now, it's about... Some of it's based on whatever the, the assessed value of the town. So what I think, yeah. it's around 250 million. So around every 250,000 dollars is a buck. That's what mm -hmm. it is. It's a buck on a tax rate. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're buying everyone doing the goodies at the Christmas tree at the town meeting. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and this is it to usually go up, spelled I think, out. a little bit less than 250,000, but not um, substantially less. Uh, Frontier came in with a 7% increase. Mm -hmm. um, Conway Grammar School just uh, a little over 3.3%, I think, now. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Grammar School did a great job of, of controlling its costs. Uh, Frontier, <coughs> we'll see where that ends up. But the first figure that I got, and again, all of this will be preliminary because we don't have final school budgets. And we won't have them in time to start making decisions about what the, what the, you know, warrant looks like. Um, but we will, by the time the warrant is finalized, because we can't finalize it until we have the right yeah. figures. So um, until then, we're operating just with the drafts that we have. Yeah. Um, so that's that's an introduction. I uh, again for these. Uh, projected FY 2019 special articles. Uh, the same figures, two different ways of organizing them. Um, one by department and one by the funding source. And you can see under funding sources, we have borrowing and free cash and capital stabilization and receipts reserved and the, the grammar schools capital stabilization and the overlay account, none of which raise taxes, at least immediately. The borrowing will raise taxes as we go along. Uh, but the, the raise and appropriate figure uh, right now is 163, a little over $163,000. So that's, uh, that's really the, the amount that raises taxes at this point. The borrowing won't raise taxes until next year. Um, but this year, uh, raise and appropriate coming down uh, fairly low. Again, if we had um, a higher free cash level that is carrying over more money from one year to the next, uh, it would provide some buffer, some kind of stabilization um, to, uh, to eventually um, keep that raise and appropriate as low as possible. Of course, it means you have to raise and appropriate it one year to get it the next year, but um, some towns actually uh, like to turn over um, a year's worth of free cash to the next year, mm -hmm. and that, that's considered a sign of, of fiscal health in some towns. I don't think we need that much of a buffer here. 
Um, but it does allow them to say, boy, we're just, we, we, we don't have to worry about stuff. We're managing ourselves you know, really well. Well, they're also carrying a lot of money in free cash. Again, I think we'll see an increase in the need as we start to, uh, uh, the select board voted to, uh, to set the uh, capital planning threshold at $5,000. So as we include all of the things in the town that cost um, $5,000 or more in that capital plan and have that um, annual contribution to capital stabilization cover all of those items instead of having that covered through the operating budget, um, we will also see an increase in the need uh, for uh, capital stabilization funds. Mm -hmm. We're funding it now at $125,000 a year. I can easily see $150,000 a year as a, as a new target, and conceivably more depending on what the, the uh, Capital Improvements Planning Committee uh, decides they need once they factor in all of the pieces of equipment in the town that cost more than five thousand dollars so, so if i heard you correctly <clears throat> let's say if we are about, let's say we generate at the end of this fiscal year so let's say there's a hundred and seventy five thousand in free cash you're saying that really best practice would really be to be generating Two hundred and fifty thousand. Well, I, I can see using. Uh, we already gener We already give one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to stabilization. Anyway, that's just <clears throat> town capital stabilization and school capital stabilization. Right. We typically also give some money to the garage stabilization to boost it, so that when we finally get the project together, we won't have to spend so much uh, on borrowing when we get there. So. Um, yeah, we our total for free cash this year was about two hundred and six thousand dollars. We spent a certain amount of that at the special town meeting, so we have one hundred and sixty-six thousand left for the annual town meeting, which covers the capital stabilization for the town, but it doesn't fully fund the capital stabilization for the school, let alone any capital. Um, items. Well, so you're not saying you double. It. You're saying, say it again. What? How you? What you said? We, oh, we whatever we we don't spend in free cash. We usually spend all of our free cash these days. Yes. Um, there are towns that turn over free cash to the next year. They don't spend all their free cash. Right. Um, we were in that situation. Well, that was generating free cash as, as the budget was structured. So you're saying that if they were turned over as much as you, as... Uh, as we got, yeah. No, no but pro just before, Tom, you said... Yeah, they would turn over the same... The, it, it's true, I see what you're saying. Um, I'm just let, 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 let me rephrase it to Back say to that they sure. turned over a very substantial amount of free cash every year mm -hmm. so that what they generated they could turn over that same amount again to the next year as a as a financial practice that is they did they purposely didn't spend all of it right and and they were able to turn over um, okay so you're saying yeah. that right so really what you're saying is find a level that we're comfortable with and try and have that level be consistent year after year, mm -hmm. if possible. Yes, and, and because we, we spend $175,000 a year on just the town and grammar school capital stabilization funds, if we want to use free cash for other things, um, and, and what are we using it for? Um, I'm proposing OPEB, our library contribution, and. Uh, essentially s small items because we don't have a lot to spend right now. But in the past, we've spent it on some capital purchases. Um, as well as putting money into capital stabilization, we, we would spend some of that for um, equipment purchases. Uh, if we wanted to get back to that kind of practice, we would have to have more free cash to, to do What's that. What's the amount that you... 
because you would calculate. Yeah. I think that a level of two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. in free cash is entirely comfortable for the town. So we're not we're not that far off. No, it's another seventy five thousand dollars that would. Um, It would it would give more flexibility to the sources of funds, mm -hmm. and you know keeping it away from the raise and appropriate every year. Yeah, you start off with that that seventy five thousand in in a comfort level in your budget, mm -hmm. which is not a huge amount for a for a five and a half million dollar operating budget. Right. And so the two fifty is um, uh, what are you talking about? Uh, it was 5% of the uh, budget. By 2.5%. Yeah, that's, that's a general rule. The general rule of fund should be about 2.5%. That's just a rule of fund. No, no, hold on. No, no, but 255, yeah, okay, 2.5%. Yeah. Right. And is that what Joe Markarian had recommended? Or he was at, some people were at 4 and 5% free cash, right? Yeah. Um, I don't that's, think that's necessary for Conway. Yeah. yeah. Um, but 250 is really, at the bottom level, I, I and, would and we were at two hundred six this year. Right, yeah. we were just over two hundred last year as well. So, or yeah. just around two hundred. Okay. Yeah, it's and it's, you know, it's a number. You're never going to hit it exactly because you don't know what yeah. your excise tax is going to be and all the other stuff. The, the oil spill. And 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 the other thing is, if there are needs that come up in the early part of the year, they can be that free cash can be used as we did. Um, okay, you know, times. this last fall, um, it, it can be used to tie the town over via a special town meeting um, between times when you set the tax <coughs> rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any questions on Tom's sheets here? Yeah, I have another. Okay. Uh, you could interrupt. Uh, I just want to make a suggestion, just because it stands out as such a sore thumb, and it represents me, and that's this IT line, uh, which takes a very significant jump. And I really wonder if you could just have a couple of indents in there that says internet access, telephone, and the rest of it, because, this, you know, somebody's going to say, well, what's going on here? This year it's 30, next year it's, I mean, it's a new, it's a new line item, you know, for for the budget itself to be standing, you know, it's only been out there for for one or two years, right? Yeah. So I, I, I'm just I'm just saying. I mean, you know, certainly they're going to discuss. People are going to want to know, well, why is the audit going up or whatever? And you know, I, you could do the same thing there. But I just think the IT thing is is uh, you know. Well, in in general, <laughs> I think it's a good idea to have some discussion of the budget. And often the finance committee takes that on. Often the town administrator will, will, will you know, do some of the items um, that, that I might know about. And, and I think it is, it is worth giving people some information before they have to ask questions or answering questions that maybe they didn't even know they had. They, did, they hadn't noticed something. So I think it, it is useful um, when Article Two comes up, to have mm -hmm. uh, something get prepared, noticed, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, something well, prepared, and and it's in my budget. I take all of the items that can right. go up more than ten thousand right. dollars, wherever they right. are, operating budget or anything you, else. You know, the attention span people have. You know, they're reading it. Who knows? They're just going to eyeball it, like I would too. And I would say, "What the heck is that?" Mm -hmm. You know. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting it out there. I'm prepared to defend it, <laughs> but I, I don't feel like I should. <laughs> yeah. Can you legally defend it? What's that? Can you legally defend it? Can I legally defend it? <laughs> As we're no, finance you can. Would Tom do it then? You would not be able to do that legally. Uh -huh. What? Uh oh, that. <laughs> who, who would do it then? Yeah, Somebody he, else in the finance committee. But, uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah, well I'd have to excuse myself. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, it, it's just people say they extrapolate, say oh, 10 grand this year, it's going to go up 10 grand next year. What's going on? Yeah. No, we're just trying to increase the speed yeah. here. We move the telephone somewhere else, you know, from one thing to another. But I, it's just my, Maybe my response. Maybe a handout sheet they pass out the night before the meeting starts with some of these increases in the parameters. So substantial. 
just a quick explanation as to why they want it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I do have my whole budget, which explains all of it in detail. That's probably too much for people yes. to, yes. to mm -hmm. deal with. Right, I, I that think, is too much. I think, you know, a, a sheet is a good idea, but also, you know, some, somebody, we're gonna, somebody we're going have through a, it. pre-town meeting, too. Well, well pre-town meeting, meeting, sure. So. Yeah. But I, I think you can do the pre-town meeting. <laughs> nothing yeah. legal, illegal worries there. Well, yeah. Okay. If, if they if if somebody voted to, to discuss this separately from if the town voted to discuss that line item separately from all the others, Ray would probably not want to participate. Or uh, yeah, that's that's what I'd say. I could still vote. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <You're still going. laughs> One comment I have overall, the largest individual expense uh, category, of course, is, is personnel, uh, salaries. And uh, we, I, since I've been on the community in about two years, but it'd be nice to hear from the personnel in terms of suggestions in the future about cost of living. So one concern I have is, you know, in the future, when people need to be replaced in their positions to make sure that we're not going to get stock with a substantial one year year on year increase to have to recruit if we're paying below you know competitive uh, wage that's just a suggestion i have well I've, I've been working for several years to bring us up at least to what our consultant called the benchmark or the average of our comparable towns salaries for each of the positions and i think we're pretty close to that um i know uh I, I, I would like the, the personnel committee to do a little bit more work on, on compensation and, and ensure that we are, in fact, um, if not exactly competitive, at least not uncompetitive. Mm -hmm. uh, in I, the middle of the bell curve. <laughs> I, I was striving for, for some time for a, a very middle of the road. Let's get everybody to the, the benchmark. Yeah. Um, and of course, those figures are a couple of years old now. Right. But, um, I don't think things have changed all that much in, in Franklin County. So yeah. um, it, 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 it's not that hard to get, you know, five or six towns and, and a few a few sample salaries to see if there are any trends going on. Mm -hmm. And and it's true. Um, it would be great to have a town that was competitive. Um, you know, going for going for the middle of the road is is not a bad strategy either, because then they're coming to work for the town because they want to work for the town, mm -hmm. and they know they're not, you know, they're not disadvantaging themselves. So um, that's a strategy, and and uh, and the personnel committee will um, is very much aware of the compensation issue, and uh, they're meeting next in March, and. Um, and that is absolutely part of their agenda. Thank you. Okay. My next item, radio fees. What are we got on radio fees? Yeah, I wanted to mention that especially because that hadn't, they, they had not come in uh, the last time we spoke, and, and now they have come in, and, and, they, and there is a substantial increase. And uh, um, I have asked the department heads for, you know, if, if it, if, if they need to increase their budgets because of that. And I have, in fact, increased the ambulance uh, radio fee line item because the uh, substantial increase that, that is called for uh, had not been reflected in their budget. So now it is. Uh, I've amended their budget. And um, uh, it, it was covered by the, by the police budget. And I didn't hear anything in particular from the Fire chief, but I think it is covered by your budget as I well. I got one. I have one. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have a big increase in radio fees. Mm -hmm. we, 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 that wasn't unexpected, though. No, it wasn't. It, 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 it's just that it, it did change some of the budget you saw. So yeah. if you're hanging on to the old, um, the old Excel sheets for the public safety departments, just know that ambulance has gone up in its radio fees, and, and we're still working on that. Uh, Okay. On the big picture. Okay, next item. COLA increases. Does the Finance Committee have a recommendation on a COLA increase? <clears throat> a percentage? You know, my thought is, you know, Social Security every year sets two years, the COLA increase is set at 2%. And that being said, if there's contracts or the Personal Committee says, you know, that's not going to be competitive with what's out there, then I guess it has to change as a general rule. I think that's something good to go by. Does the uh, FERCOG time offer any type of a uh, 
annual suggested amount? I don't think they suggest an amount to towns, no. Okay. What, at, at the last at the last Burtog Finance Committee that I was at, the, the suggested increase was two percent. Mm -hmm. That was for the the COG budget. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's for all their employees. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's the that's the biggest increase in Social Security in at least several years. Actually, in one year, two percent. Last year was only point three percent. Year before was zero. Right, but the thing of it is, it's tough to really use that as a strict basis because of the way they mark the, because the calculation isn't isn't all that great, in, at least as I understand it. <laughs> yeah. We've had this discussion before. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're going to. You're going to calculate it to be as little as possible. Yeah, it's chain weighted now, which is a whole different formulation okay. from before. And so, so the real question is: Are folks facing higher costs for their essentials? Are they facing higher costs for their medical insurance? Meaning, uh, so I mean, I don't have these uh, these answers, but are we still at a 70-30 split on the health insurance? Yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Throughout the schools as well as the town, mm -hmm. right? So they're getting they're getting a good deal actually. By today. That's a very good deal yes, yes. Yeah. compared to the private sector. That's Definitely. a very good deal. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I'm not voting tonight on it <laughs> myself. I'm not. So you, uh, you would abstain. Okay, what's the recommendation of the finance committee? Well, if he's going to abstain, we don't really have a. Is that a quorum? Well, he, well, I'm well, saying I don't think we have to vote right now yet. Oh, okay. That's my guess. Well, so you can, you I wouldn't can, vote tonight. I'll discuss you, it all you want. You can vote later. I'll, I'll note yeah. that the, the difference is uh, $2,651 yeah. overall. Between For a half two a and, two and a half. And, the, and uh, in recent years, two and a half has been the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the amount that was approved. Yeah. So... I mean, uh, I, I would suggest, as chief of staff, more or less, <laughs> that um, that um, although that is two thousand six hundred fifty-one dollars that carries forward in perpetuity, um, that, that it there, is not. That is the problem, because I, you know, when you look at this, they could say you got five thousand dollars on a six five and a half million dollar budget. You know, give them three percent, everybody would be really happy. Well, okay. <laughs> but, but I and I also understand that the, the need to moderate that kind of thing over time. But it, yeah, so there, you know, is is there anything that that makes this year, um, you know, particularly easier for people than uh, than past years? Um, I would say that that is a a cheap price to buy good morale. Um, two two and a half percent. Well, the half a percent difference. Mm -hmm. Um, the twenty-six hundred dollars, but the difference between two, two and two and a half, two and a half, is a cheap, right. is a cheap yeah. price for maintaining um, a positive attitude amongst the employees. Yeah, I would. I suspect Furcog is going to be higher than two percent next year. And, you know, I think the inflation's going up, and, and there'll be a lot of pressure for a larger increase next, next year. year. There, there, there They're were, also very well paid. There were, <laughs> there were. Other pressures that caused that two percent increase to happen, um, uh, because they they lost some funding on some grants, and rather than go in a situation where they had to either reduce hours for people, okay, they went a little lower on their recommendation for, the, and they don't call it a cola; they call it. They call it something yeah. else. Yeah, we shouldn't. Uh, we're typically, we so, really shouldn't call it a call. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so, so a general raise that that may be a little less than what other towns are giving out this year. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think two and a half is a good is a good. I, uh, I'm prepared to lower two and a half percent. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. But I, do, do we do we have a recommendation there? Well, two and a half. Is it, no. 
You don't have a quorum, though. Well, you have a quorum present, and you would have two. Two, two, two voting members. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm under this. What's the right, let's, right now? It's true. Okay. There's no the hurry. school's budgets are going to have way more of an impact. Yeah, we'll, yeah. but still, we'll... And we'll, you're waiting for them. We'll hold off to, on both. Yeah. Well, as a guidance for yeah. Tom in... in the guidance actually say works for two and a half percent. We just want to include some of the other people. In right, the, two, and, uh, two and a half looks good. Yes. Yeah. We'll this way you don't have to... Uh, it's good for a too many I will reiterate that over a no quarter of the town's population is 65 or more, I think. Yeah, about 30 percent. So in the last three years, the count in this one, Alan says they're going to get a 2 percent increase in Social Security. So in three years, that'll be like 2.3 percent. And next year, in, in the three years, that'll be whatever it is, 7.5 percent. Maybe it was 3, 3, 2.5. How can it have been 3 over the years? Just to say, then morale's a good thing. Yeah. And, maybe and as the chief of staff, I can security. imagine that you'd appreciate the <laughs> morale. Well, we shouldn't call it a cost of living adjustment. No, call no, it a salary no. adjustment to remain competitive. Yeah. Them. Well, it don't matter what you call it. No. Right. All right, so we have, we've had enough discussion on yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. For now. <laughs> okay. um, I, I would ask just if there are any other financial items you're particularly interested in. Next week, I should be presenting the budget as a whole. Oh, um, it's okay. been, it started off being a pretty crazy week with uh, all the yeah. doings sure. that are going on. Um, and at this point, I, I'm not sure I can, I can guarantee it, but I'm gonna try my hardest to have a, my regular budget for you at the time I said I would. I have a question, the Conway Grammar School, the Frontier Regional School, has the have the chapter seventy monies? The, have the rates been set by the state? Does the county cabinet have information yet? The governor has presented his budget. Uh, it now goes to the Senate and the House, mm -hmm. and they create their budgets. And then there's the conference committee between the Senate and the House, and then there's a final budget that the governor signs, typically after the fiscal year has started. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, in other words, on March so, 9th, will we really have enough information to make a final recommendation, in your opinion? I mean, March, not March 16th? Um, we will, yes. The, the school budgets, I think, take into account, they're, they're, believe it or not, conservative budgets in, in many ways. And they're not going to, the worst thing you can do is to have a revenue deficit. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have a budget that in which you've estimated more revenue than you actually get. Mm -hmm. So um, they're not going to put out anything that says they're going to get more Chapter 70 than they actually are. If they do, it's, it's good. It goes into excess and deficiency. You know, they're free cash. 20% is what the governor, I think, put in his budget, right? I think. The chapter 70, the you know, reimbursement rate is 20 percent. I think that's yes. consistent with the year before, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. It was a slight increase, mm -hmm. but um, not, not substantial. All right. Okay. So there shouldn't be too many curves. When it was March 16th, we should be able to come up with a, a really good final, final recommendation when we, uh, when we meet and to discuss that. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. Any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting? I have not. No? Okay. Your uh, update, Thomas? Yes. On uh, just a little bit more information on the, uh, on the budget. Uh, insurance is going up for us over 15% for workers' compensation. Ooh. And the tornado damage will be factored into FY 2019's rate as well. So I've raised the insurance numbers accordingly. Why do we have a bunch of comp uh, claims? Yeah. Well, it, and, and it's, in, it's kind of a, a running average. So um, we're getting into an era where we had more claims. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just year by year. I think it's a it's a four or five year average yeah. that they use. What, what, what's the dollar amount of that increase? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Well, maybe I Estimate. do. Estimate. How many claims do uh, Yes, um, $8,200. Okay. How many claims do you have this last year? Um, I would have to look that up. But again, it's not one year to one year. I understand It's uh, several years. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think we required a lot in payout, but there were a number of instances. So and they based that on their rate? Um, I don't know the details of that. All I know is what they told me, <laughs> which is $8,200 for the whole shebang. Um, from from 78 700 to 86 900. That's a that's a 10 percent increase. That's over a 10 percent. They don't increase. give you an estimated uh, reason as to why it's increased. 15 percent. Um, uh, well, again, workers' comp was was a large part of that. Um, however, they count that. I'm sure it's a it's a formula. Did I read somewhere or hear somewhere that the rate that the uh, uh, the not the employees, but the rate that the our town the county would pay percentage-wise based on how many salaries they have, wages they have. I think I heard that they're going up anyway. Oh yes, across the, the board to everybody. The, there is a general Charles, you know, increase. Say it was, say it was yeah, two uh, percent per every dollar you pay employee. Mm -hmm. That percentage is going up. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm sure that's part of it too, and and, and maybe the general insurance is going up too. But again. Uh, the tornado does factor, and, and the salt shed does factor into mm -hmm. that. Yep. Um, I will note that there have been a number of insurance instances this year, mm -hmm. uh, including very recently. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, committee, uh, notes the uh, capital improvements planning committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow night mm -hmm. has to be canceled. I had uh, agreed to post it at the chair's request and uh, put it on my calendar for yesterday, but of course wasn't in due to the holiday. And Friday, my uh, entire mind was taken up with other business. Um, as I really can't take this on for all committees, to be fair, I have notified them that they'll have to post their own yeah, meetings. Yeah, all committees should post their own meetings. I, every yeah. once in a while, I try to do people a favor. And <laughs> let, let all the committees post their own meetings. Yeah. yeah. So it's either going to be Dana or I. Are you? One of them. Yes, I understand. Yeah. So my apologies. Yeah, I'll leave it to Dana, but it'll be me, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, for departments, uh, I've received another call from the owner of the property on Delabar Avenue requesting relief from the parking bylaw, part of the zoning bylaw. The highway department has been very responsive, but has not said she can disregard the bylaw. She believes that restoring the original driveway is not acceptable and says that her neighbor is not happy about her using the neighbor's driveway mm. during storms. Just a heads up on that. I haven't uh, even spoken with Ron about this latest call yet. Okay. Um, Conway is unfortunately ineligible for the Community Compact IT grant this year. Uh, we're participating this year in a regional grant the treasurer joined for software conversion and even though we're not the lead town, we are participating, which makes us ineligible mm. until next year. Um, that said, the administrative assessor and I will be ready to submit the proposal next year when we are once again eligible. Okay. Uh, I'm working with Bruce Juanette to line up a firm to work on the Conway Grammar School well pump replacement and water tank liner if town meeting approves the funds. There is a fairly narrow window to get the job done, as Bruce is going to be on vacation just prior to a period when there is very little activity at the school early August. Unfortunately, quotes so far did not include prevailing wage, which is required for this work. I've gotten the standard form, and I'm working with Bruce to get it out to the firms he asked for quotes. This means that the final amount on the warrant may need to be higher than the current amount. Okay. Um, probably not by too much. That will have to be done before we go to print them, correct? Oh, yeah. Because you can't raise it, raise it. You can lower it on town meeting floor, but right. you can't raise, right? Well, it, it's a judgment call by the moderator of whether it's a substantially different article. So raising it a penny might not be a problem, but, <coughs> you know. I mean, always used to be, you couldn't raise anything. We'll see. Um, that, is an, that is certainly a best practice. Uh, I got a note on Thursday from the Union 38 business manager saying that the Conway Grammar School had a pipe freeze mm. during their Christmas vacation and just submitted the invoice for $14,300 
to see whether our insurance will cover it, which of course it will. Um, though it would have been better if we, we had. We, uh, do we just find out about this on Thursday? Are we just finding out about this? You're just finding out about it now. I found out about it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, so uh, I did send it to the. Uh, they didn't officially notify the town. Yeah, fire department was there the night the pipe blew open. But oh, okay. Uh, um, well, uh, I, you know, it'll. Uh, this is another one of the things that's going to appear on our rate next year. I think. They don't have contingencies in their budget for things like that. Well, if the insurance covers it, then that's probably best. But fourteen thousand is a large bill. They might not have been expecting it was that large. It is a large bill. Um, which may be why we hadn't heard about it that till now. They were assuming they could cover it, and then when they found out how much it was, like, because that is a large amount. Uh, seems like a very large amount. Well, it, but it could be lots of sheetrock and. You know, I mean, it's not just a plumber and it'll repair the pipe. It's not your ordinary pipe, from what I understand either. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, town council reports that he's working with the State Office of Administration and Finance to clarify rules around the acceptance of a new health plan. That's the 32B process we will be entering into at any time now. The process is quite involved and demanding, and he is trying to see whether it can be made easier. Involves the formation of two committees, um, which seem to have almost entirely overlapping membership, um, and he's trying to figure out the easiest way to go forward. Um, I am making steady progress on the budget, though there will be some uncertainties, as always, especially concerning the school budgets, which are not final. Okay, thank you, Tom. Sure. All right, next item, concerns of the selectmen. Do you have any concerns? No. No, no concerns. Okay. Mail. Uh, we got some mail from Comcast. Uh, it's already time to renegotiate our contract. I can't believe that. So. And what we'll do, we're going to put this Here. on the agenda for next week, okay, and we'll discuss it. All right. Um, I... We'll not say what I have in mind right now, but, but we, will, we will discuss this next week. Mm -hmm. All right, any announcements? No announcements, okay. Next meeting is scheduled for Monday, February 26th uh, here in the town hall uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, with a joint meeting with the finance committee at 6.30. All right, if there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.